Sky Riley is a musician who happens to be incredibly famous. Uh, we meet her at the beginning of the movie. She is about to embark on a world tour um, and a lot of uh, weird and strange things begin happening. Begin Well, begin happening, that doesn't make sense. Uh, a lot of strange things start to happen and uh, what's going on internally begins to really unravel as the movie goes on. I was a fan of Parker's. I'd watched his short film in 2020, which was Laura Hasn't Slept, and I thought it was amazing. And cut to a couple of years later, when the movie came out, I was like, oh, I have to watch this. And so watched it in the cinema, and um, I've just been a fan. And so when I met him about this, I didn't actually know anything about what his plans were. Um, and he started talking about Sky, and I just thought, wow, this sounds like such an interesting character. We were supposed to have like a 30 minute conversation and it was two and a half hours. And I think the best thing creatively when you're working with someone is when you meet them and it begins to feel like you're already working, if that makes sense. And you're already bouncing, you know, back and forth, things you love, movies you love and, um, talking about character and things. So that's what it felt like. It was kind of an instant click. And then then I read the script and I felt like, okay, this really does deliver on what he spoke about. And I was just so excited to play her because I just felt like she was very complex and interesting. As it pertains to being a musician um, and being very a very famous musician, and in that way, I think that's something that was more things that I've observed and things that I guess we all have watched and see. Um, it was more in terms of my own personal um, experience as a musician, that was more what I could bring to the, uh, the writing process or the crafting of Sky and actually in the studio and getting to write, co-write some of the songs and um, that's the part that was, I was kind of able to tap into some things. However, also really lent into the character of it. It really doesn't sound like me, which was so much fun because I could, I could kind of, you know, I had, we had two songs that were already written when I, sorry, three songs when I was cast, two of which were written and produced by Ida Rose, and it was her voice on the demos, so she was kind of like my br blueprint. And I really lent into that, you know, it doesn't sound like me at all, and that's what I want, I want it to be Sky's sound and Sky's music. Uh, so yeah. When we first met, Parker is just the most intense, enthusiastic person, cr creative and visionary, and that is what you kind of that's what you want in a director because he, of course, he, he cares so deeply, but also I just trust that he, I trust him in terms of just, everything's a trust exercise, it always is, right? But it felt like, it, and he's such a collaborator, it felt like he really trusted me. And so from, to kind of go from that first meeting, initial meeting, to actually get in the trenches with someone and feel like you still are partners, especially because it was a very demanding movie and just hard and, you know, real kind of grit and blood, sweat and tears. So to come out the other side and feel like this is still my creative partner and we still really have that trust is one of the things I'm probably most proud of in terms of this process. And he just, yeah, he's just like, he's amazing. I, I absolutely love working with him. And he was of course imperative to helping me in terms of where Sky was at, when, and how to, sometimes I'd be like, am, am, I, am I not doing too much? And he's like, no, no, trust me, trust me, trust me. So, um, and he pushes you, man. Like he really pushes you like in the best way. That's what you want as a performer. You can expect everything that you love from the first movie, but just bigger and crazier and more unhinged and stakes are higher in the sense that we are living with a public facing person. I wanted to make sure that if I was even going to approach a sequel that I was going to uh, try to do something that wasn't just a, a traditional continuation or like 
any kind of obvious retread. I wanted to uh, go in a different, unexpected, exciting direction. And if I was going to ask audience members to give me their time again, that I would really make it worthwhile with something bigger, bolder, way crazier. And, um, you know, it was the discovery of the character of Sky Riley, this mega pop star uh, that really unlocked everything. I love the idea of taking um, this world of, of pop that's, you know, glam and glitz and, and shininess and sort of um, having it collide with this, like, really stressful, anxiety-inducing, uh, you know, smile curse um, and sort of bringing them together. That felt like a great challenge. I sort of immersed myself in documentaries and essays and interviews um, about pop stars and, and the world of pop. And it was really important to me to, to build credibility in the character of Sky Riley, to make this pop star that sort of blurs the lines between reality and fiction, someone who almost feels like she's actually part of our world. Um, and in casting Naomi, uh, she was the perfect storm for the role of Sky. I mean, she has this really uncanny X factor to her, this, this gravitas um, that you believe her as this mega pop star, but then she's also capable of these incredibly human, raw moments uh, where we see her spiraling out of control and, and punching through rock bottom. Um, beyond that, she also happens to be this ridiculously talented singer and she you know, performs all of the choreography in the film. So like I said, she was the perfect storm. You know, we go bigger, we go way more off the rails. Uh, it's much bloodier, it's much nastier, it's much meaner. Um, but there's also, I wanted to inject uh, this sort of fresh new sense of dark humor into it that I hope will catch audiences off guard. Um, it's a really, really insane ride. <laughs> I think exactly that. They can expect, you know, to be screaming, to be laughing, to be jumping, um, but also to be really, hopefully, um, absorbed and involved in this character's story. Um, coming out the end sort of, you know, drenched with, with sweat and, and, and dripping with adrenaline, um, but also uh, having this sort of sense of catharsis.